before I show you the rig, the base rig here, I wanted to just say that for those of you who haven't gone through high school and such playing in bands, figuring out your sound is kind of a nightmare. Uh, I think more so for bass players because you're dealing with the resonance of the room, the resonance of the stage, all these resonances and bass is all about vibration. So the bass itself, it's a modulus that might be my third modulus. Um, it has a through neck, which they used to hate to make, but now they do it a little more often because they have to glue the wood to the, to the graphite. But the graphite makes it so it's very even across the fingerboard and, and it cha doesn't change with weather as much. But this is pretty simple. Um, volume, treble, bass, and then the mid-range you can sweep the frequency. But I leave these flat because I don't know how I'm affecting the front of house. And I'd rather just do my own tone setting for back here. But this one, which pans between the pickups, is an interesting one. It's kind of the, the, the trickiest one to figure out because it sounds so different. So, for example, if I were to go all the way to this pickup and use my fingers, which I don't do that often anymore, it's like a Jocko Pistorius sound, which I would never use that sound. It's very much not me. Plays a lot of 16th notes, and um, he's an incredible bass player, and a lot of people have the Jocko sound. I'm opposite. Um, I like to go toward the front pickup for a rounder sound. Um, sounds similar to my normal sound until you hear the front pickup one. But put it right in the middle. Okay. I call that the chewing gum sound because it sounds to me like the bass, like the bass is chewing gum, changing, you know, that kind of uh, changing mouth shape is a different envelope for every note. And I like that because I thought it was even. Bet slap people use that a lot because it's less cutting for the slap sounds. It's hard to get a good sound with picking and, and slapping, and I don't use the fingers too much. The less you do, the better, I think. Um, so I took the fingers out of the equation, even though there's still some grooves I can do better with my fingers. And I slap by putting the pick and holding it here. And then kind of flicking it back in. And usually a really good sound will work for both. So I'm going to sort of demonstrate what I've got here uh, in two categories. The rig part, meaning the amps and the speakers, and then the processing, which is all the effects pedals. Um, so starting with the rig, I have unabashedly copied Phil Lesh on some things, and this is a new, uh, this is a new rig that stems from some copying. I have to admit because I've appreciated his tone. It's just uh, among a few different bass players whose tones I appreciate, um, like Bootsy Collins and etc. Uh, John Entwistle and you know people who have carved out new directions in bass tone. The new rig um, is software controlled. So every sp there's four speakers, every speaker there uh, has a different EQ curve, and then they're all put together, and someone with a microphone is putting noise through and seeing what the response is as they combine. And then if I choose to smallify it and take out the big speaker or take out the middle speaker, then I've got a different curve already for that. But otherwise, it's very even. And from there, I can do the tone shaping I want to do and then start to add my processing. OK, so around the corner here, there's the computer. What that does is it controls this blue thing. I think if I turn off, if I mute those channels and this one, then everything's muted except I have it coming through my monitor. A um, little bit in the monitor. That's because when I walk forward a little bit, not enough low end, not enough boom. Um, so I get a little bit in the monitor. But anyway, when I add this one back in, that's just to send everyone else. A lot of other people are getting a lot of bass. Trey, Paige, Fish, you know those people. These four are mine. So here, that's the low. It's a double 18 cabinet. And it's tuned for only my lowest notes. Super deep. Then this one, 212 cabinet, I think it's called the Meyer, it's all Meyer, 500 HP or something. It's a sub, but it's got 12 inch speakers, so it's a small sub. This one is just like this, except it's been retuned to go up to 500 hertz. What that means is every note of the bass will get its fundamental tone coming out of this one. Whereas this one, it's going to drop off in the middle of the bass because this is only for lower frequencies. And then on top, the tweeter thing, that, it actually goes down pretty low. So uh, that's the last one. Actually, just for fun, let's try this. I'm going to mute everything else except the top one. So it's um, pretty even sounding, but it has, doesn't have the low end. OK, so I'll put everything back on. 
as you go more vertically like that, I feel bad about blocking the view of people behind, but when you go more vertically, um, you get what's called a line array, which means that it's going to throw forward more and to the side less. Um, and that's good so that people don't get blasted. Trey's going to get more bass than me, because uh, off to the side, you don't get the clarity and you do get the boom. That's the basic concept with uh, the rig. This Eden, this Eden thing here is being used as a preamp, but I've, I'm not using any of the EQ here. No enhance knob, which I used to have on full. Uh, no EQ, no nothing, because I'm trying to do it all in the software. That way, if I'm at a, at a venue and it sounds really good, next time I return, I can start from that curve and then uh, beat the system. This bugger here is 10 banks of EQ. These buttons mean that I'm not using any of them, but in an emergency, I don't want to deal with a darn software. So I can just go turn on th this button and 70 hertz I can take down really quickly. So I have some places to go in an emergency. And really, I try not to do much during the show. I try to get used to it and uh, maybe adjust the volume a little, which is this knob here. This goes through two tubes before it gets to the, the EQ and the rest of the, the system as controlled with the software. So anyway, that is the main muscle of the rig. I don't know how many thousand watts of power come in this relatively small speaker system. By the way, I'm trying to um, smallify this bugger here, and if they made one of these that were really deep, it could get the lowest notes. This is really here for my lowest three notes. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna say one other thing about this deal, or uh, before I go on to talking about all the effects. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is that it's, it's difficult to spend six years on a certain rig. The last rig was bigger, had 418s and some 12s up top, uh, and it had a bigger than life sound that uh, if anyone, we should sell tickets, one ticket to right here because this was the place to get the good bass sound right next to me because it was a, it was really wallowing in low end. Uh, not, not so much volume as thunder or whatever you would call it. But the problem is, is that it was spreading out to the other band members. Soon as you get off access from a bass rig, the low end is boomy and not clear. So it was really hard for everyone else. It's hard for him to mix the sound out front because all the extra low end was creeping into the drum mics and that makes the, the bass sound more distant up front. You don't want it to get in there. Other people do things, they'll put triggers on the drum mics or um, baffles or whatever uh, to make, keep the other sounds up, but we don't do that. We keep an open feeling on the drum mics. Uh, all these speakers, by the way, it's not just the EQ, are time aligned to each other. That means if this one hits a microsecond before this one, or probably a millisecond, then you, you slow it down so that it's going to hit at the same time for all the speakers. It's a great sounding rig, but it's new, and last night was the first night. As I said, I took six years to dial every knob of the last rig perfectly. And in addition, I really committed to, to have a softer sound on stage to make it easier for the, the house mix and easier for the other people. Keeping the volume down and, and using a new rig combined was pretty difficult for me, so I'm uh, a fish out of water, no pun intended. And I, I'm hoping to grow into it.